This video is sponsored by AG1 by Athletic Greens. Good morning, you two. Beautiful September morning. A little bit crisp. I got a feeling I'm not going to be sweating quite so much today. It's supposed to be a high of, I think, 61. It's in the low 50s now, and it feels awesome. This morning, we are going to put this brand new 45-foot honeybee header on the new to us S780, which means I have to have a lot of mental clarity, focus, and energy. Luckily, in AG1, there are over 75 different ingredients, including vitamins, minerals, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. The best part is, for me, it's convenient. All you gotta do is mix in one scoop with eight ounces of water every day. If you guys are interested in some for yourself, all you gotta do is go to athleticgreens.com slash millennialfarmer. Right now, they're gonna give my community, you guys, a free year supply of immune supporting vitamin D with your order and five free travel packs. Athleticgreens.com slash millennial farmer. Jeez, it's like 50 degrees warmer in here. I'll fix that. Before I fire this thing up, I figured I'd climb up here and check out the Crary Big Top we installed yesterday. This thing should hold over 500 bushels in the hopper now. We'll see. They never actually seem to me like they hold as much as they're supposed to, but sometimes it's hard to get a reading because you're dealing with wet corn and different weights and usually unloading on the go. So nonetheless, it's gonna hold a lot of grain. Do you guys see a problem here? Do you see where that door goes if I leave this unfolded? Has nothing to do, nothing to do with the big top because these sides stick out anyway, but this ladder, and the very top of these. Those are 16 foot doors. I really kind of wish we had gone 18 feet on those, just, just basically for reasons like this. So you can unfold the hoppers in here, but you better not try driving in and out of the shop with the hoppers open, and that terrifies me a little bit. Because I'm just gonna guess if I rip that hopper off and run it into the door, it's gonna do dozens of dollars worth of damage. boss is here. I better at least look like I'm doing something. And there's my donut guy. He said he's bringing donuts if you want to stick around. Well, I'll stick around for a donut for sure before I Yeah, you don't have to run away from him. But I need a jacket on and need a donut. It is a little chilly. Jason, how's it going? Not too bad. How you doing? Not bad. Did you hit the hair and makeup trailer on your way in? I for the camera? Oh, yeah. Does it look good? Yeah, it looks great. I got a little touch up here to do, but... Yeah, it looks good. <laughs> Excellent. Got some donuts. <laughs> we are going to shuffle a couple things around here, get some stuff in some easier places to work on them. <laughs> Anna, we need to hit a million subs. I'm telling you, then you get your ride. We got a little bit of wiring to throw in the combine and a couple pieces we got to put on that header because it's never been run before. It is brand new, so we still got to get some snouts on there and a couple other things. Jason's over inspecting that now. I'm going to move it closer to the shop where it's out of the wind and a little warmer. So you actually have to pump air into into the header? You don't have to, it's just quick. I wanna make sure, check everything while we got it here at the shop. So okay. I'm just gonna fill the air. You can do it here in a minute or two, but it's a slow pump. It works really good during harvest, but if you're going from zero pressure up to like 90, which we're gonna do for setting it, it'll take 12, 13 minutes. So you're just pumping it just to set it? Just, yeah. just so that you just can do it sure, off the combine? Check everything. Okay. Make sure everything's good. And it should only take a couple minutes on here. So this is adjusting how rigid, actually I can see it moving here. The whole thing's moving right now as he fills it up. Yeah, so that adjusts the cutter bar pressure. Obviously you can see it picking it up right there. So that is adjustable from in the cab. We're gonna run some wires and a control monitor in the cab so you can adjust how rigid you want that. Can I do the shake thing? I'll have to take it back down to like 65 PSI. Oh, because it's because it's pretty now rigid right now. Shake. Okay. It's rigid. So if you grab this, I know I remember last year you grab one end and shake it, you can see that pan just flow. It, I mean, it's like a garden hose. You whip it and you can see it go from one end to the other. The nice thing is that you know that's how it follows the contour of the ground. Right. Yep. That was that's a good dance move. <laughs> Follow the contour. <laughs> it's all in the hips. 
Dad's gonna go mow some field approaches there, so they're done. He's got really bad ragweed allergies, so he likes to trim that stuff all out of here now and get rid of that pollen and the dust. And it's, uh, it's just nicer working around with the shorter grass. Also, pumping this up did not take 12 or 13 minutes. I think Jason misspoke. It took like 15 seconds. Check this out. Just found this totally random pair of snazzy new gloves. Completely random. I got the snouts on. How's the wiring project going? Good, good. You could get behind these when you change. Do you change out the... the um... No, we anything in here when you change from corn to beans and stuff? Not normally. Okay. I'll just run this cord down here, I think. Otherwise we can get under these shields too. No, I think it's good here. I want to be out of the way from your shield, so if you have to get in there, I think we're alright. Okay. Does that just run right, right to the hookups the here? Okay, yeah, off the post. The okay. Well you're working on that. I'm gonna go around the machine and make sure the belts are in the right spot and everything, because I think this sure. machine has probably only been used on corn. Yeah, you guys have never touched them. No, so I, I'm just gonna make sure everything's set to the turtles and the bunnies where it needs to be. That one's where I want it. Make sure the hop roggers don't have the drains open on them. I've made that mistake before. Found a new one. I didn't know about this one. There we go. If it's the same as the others, this has got to be out of the way. We're ready to throw it on the machine and I think take a look at some settings, make sure everything is level and then kind of play with it, start some things up. We don't have beans we can take today, but it'll be nice to have things all kind of set up now because we're gonna start taking next week, I'd imagine. I hate to leave Jason hanging there, but I gotta run in the house real quick and I'm imagining he's gonna lift that thing up. I'll be back out here in a few minutes. I tend to have multiple jobs, so sometimes one of those jobs gets in the way of the other jobs. Luckily, it's all here on the same site. Well, that took longer than expected. It's been a little bit over an hour, so. I hate to leave Jason hanging that long. He knew it was coming. First thing you'll do is unhook electrical in the front of your cart. And this is the cart that comes with the header. Correct. This is not a separate cart that we bought or anything. This is what you can have the option to get with the with the Honeybee Airflex. Honeybee Transport. It's got a two inch ball on the front here. So it's got a two inch ball. And what we do is we open that two inch ball for un taking it off the trailer, getting it on the combine. And I did my electrical and I'll take this pin out. This pin's got a sleeve, it's got about 18 inches here, so that gives me 18 inches that I can move. For taking it off, I'll take it off the drop. When I come back, I'll put it in, move my tire, and then put it back on. I set this back uh, the right distance, so basically you want uh, to be able to get your finger between here and here. Okay. And feed your house, and then you know you have the right distance. Okay. Um, it could be too close. If it's too far away, it won't feed in, right? Sure. So that's just a setting we hook up when we're when One we're time new here. And you're done. Okay. Um, so then the second part, I come around to my back axle, take my pin out, this, this one's up. I took my pin out, put it down as a jack lever, and so my cart stays straight. I loosen my winch, takes my straps loose, because these straps don't hold the cart, the head on the cart. They pick up the cart into the chassis of the head when we when we reattach it. Okay. I take the pin out, pin out, and then I take that's the hook. I mean, and then the pin. Oh no! Oh no! Are you guys okay? <laughs> Jason did it. What? I knocked them hard. Easy on the viewers. <laughs> <laughs> so I pull that out. So now it's free to pick up. Setting in this chassis and that chassis, we just get back in. Oh, never forget that electrical. 
pick that up without taking it out, you're gonna rip something out. <laughs> Come on, the camera's on you. There we go. <laughs> Made me nervous. So then those will run the to the control box. This is, yep, this one comes from the power from the battery, and then the other one goes straight to the control box, runs your air, also gives you other information such as your voltage. The main reason we have to have it is for the air control. We're gonna run it over now to the flattest area in the yard, which is the shed pad over there. And we're gonna level it off, run a calibration or two on it, and make sure everything's good. He shouldn't ride there though. It is much quieter. Besides the beeping, it is much quiet. Never mind. Try not to wreck his pickup. adjusting the PSI. So that's the, the, the pressure, the rigidity of the cutter bar. Correct. The more pressure you have, the stiffer will be. The less pressure you have, the more flex. So you usually have most flex when you have nine inches of flex when you're on the, the lower end, nine to nine or 30 to 40 PSI. When you're getting up to like 40 and 50 PSI, it's producing more like seven to eight inches. And you get over 50 PSI, you lost a lot of rigidity but that's when we're going to be running over like water and mud and so you don't need as much flex but you are still hovering over it. So, that's so a guy would change that depending on like field conditions and crops. So in the morning when I come out I got done harvesting uh, it was a dry night I'm running maybe 35, 36, 37 psi just good conditions. In the morning I got some dew out there and there's going to be a little bit more dew uh, which is going to create resistance Okay. As it uh, touches the bottom. So the more wetter it is, the more resistant. So then we'll add, I'll reach over, I'll turn my pump on. Yeah. And I'll wait as I'm driving or I'm starting to harvest. And uh, it goes very slow, which is really nice for settings. It's about 12 seconds for a PSI. And usually okay. I only miss, move it like three PSI or so at a time. And that's enough to make a difference to notice. Big time, yeah. It's, okay. it's real nice. If you turn it on, you'll just set, drive for 10, 20 seconds until, you know, there's no pushing. That means you're adding a little bit of, of pressure. So now we're over that dew. But in the afternoon, when I've got, say, two, three inches of crusty leaves, soybean leaves that fill on the ground, and we've got extra air in there, so we're real light going over them, but we're higher because we're on that two inches. So then I'll drop three PSI, four PSI, so I have a little bit more weight, and I crush down on the bottom of those leaves, and that puts me right back in the ground again. Makes sense. I'm done here because if we can't do any more, I'll be back up in a week anyway, or 10 days, so. Well, there we go. We have our first, uh, our first sensor telling us we can't uh feeder house feeder house raise lower system has a valve fault repair the feeder house raise lower system and restart the calibration we're gonna have to dig into what week. that <laughs> <laughs> we'll dig into what that means but i think it's on the green machine not the header everything else is ready to go so we'll be back up and figure that out and get it running in the meantime, about I'll, three days of sun, and you're gonna have no leaves left out there. Kind of looks that way. Well, unfortunately, I guess that's how it goes. Uh, new machine to us. We haven't had it out in the field yet. I'll reset all this so I can raise it. There's a lot of different calibration procedures so that the machine knows where everything is and how fast to move things, how much fluid to push where, what's level, what's not. Some of those calibrations, most of them worked, but we. Uh, <laughs> We couldn't get that one going, park brakes on. But we got the header roughly set in about a week, 10 days. Jason will be back up here and we will head to the field and we'll do our fine tuning from there. Ooh, must be Paris. She keeps calling me all the time. Not interested.
can't see your hands, Jason. Down, okay. Roll it back. Yep. Now I'll loosen my straps a little bit more. Put one strap in there. Second strap there. Third strap. Fourth strap. Those are in place, and the straps pull it up. So it's actually lifting the cart or the, their version of a trailer right onto the header. It's pretty simple. That's their two-piece cart system. Then, it do, then you don't have a great big 40, 50 foot long trailer sitting in the yard somewhere. It's just the two pieces that go right with the header. This part always makes me nervous. Everything's very heavy and very expensive. Look at that, coming in the yard now. Apparently, cornhead delivery was on the list for today. Jason's never been in a Turbo 1000 <laughs> Turbo R Polaris Razor, so I'm gonna, I mean, he's letting us use the flex head, so I'll, I'll let him I'm excited. go for a ride in the Razor. I forgot to turn the camera on because I was having too much fun, but how was it? <laughs> oh, fun, the energy flowing. <laughs> Woke you up, huh? Yeah. I don't think he was expecting the jump when we came around oh, the corner. You didn't see that the coming? The shocks are unbelievable on that thing. <laughs> I thought we were going to hit hard or something. It's just, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Got a lot of grit in my teeth now. Dad's home from mowing road ditches and field approaches. And Jason's going to come down and get his souvenir rock. He's got some rock garden thing at home. I don't know that I've ever seen it, but uh, he found a rock that he wants. So he can have it. We got plenty more where that came from. See the layers in it. Yeah. It's, 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 we'll see Jason back here in a week to ten days, and then we'll get everything up and going and make those beans disappear. I'm gonna tuck this away in the new shed over here, where it can sit and wait until we're ready for it. I'm gonna move over that way, I guess. In the meantime, Jim stopped out and left us a bag of fresh tomatoes. So thank you, Jim. I'm gonna bring these up to the house right away.